Welcome to ABC Tutorial. Today we are going to talk about malaria. Malaria can be broken down into mal meaning bad and area meaning ear. This is because people who came down with malaria at the time it was first described were believed to live near swamps. Malaria is a preventable and curable infection transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito. Around half of the world's population is believed to be at risk of malaria infection with majority being people living in the tropical and subtropical regions. About 200 million cases of malaria occur every year, resulting in about 400,000 deaths every year. The people at risk of malaria infection include children less than 5 years of age, pregnant women, travelers to endemic areas, and immunocompromised individuals such as people living with HIV AIDS. Malaria infection is caused by plasmodium species. Five species of Plasmodium are recognized to cause malaria infection in humans. These include Plasmodium falciparum, which is the deadliest of the Plasmodium species, Plasmodium vivax, which has the widest distribution, Plasmodium ovale, which is common in West Africa, Plasmodium malariae, which has the rarest distribution, and Plasmodium nullis, which can also be found in other primates. Plasmodium species are deposited into the human circulation when the female Anopheles mosquito feeds on the human blood in order to aid the development of its eggs. The type of plasmodium deposited into the human blood by the mosquito are referred to as polozoids. These polozoids enter the liver and undergo asexual reproduction to produce merozoids. This stage is known as the primary exoerythrocytic cycle because it takes place outside of the red blood cell. The merozoids then leave the liver and enter the red blood cells. They then form a ring-shaped trophozoids and finally they form the schisms. This stage is known as the erythrocytic stage because it is taking place inside the red blood cell. These infected red blood cells then ruptures and release a new set of merozoids into the circulation. The released merozoids can then infect more red blood cells, thus leading to a cycle of red blood cells infection and destruction. Some of the released merozoids undergo sexual reproduction to form gametocytes. These gametocytes can be taken up by the female Anopheles mosquito during its next blood meal. These gametocytes undergo sexual reproduction in the mosquito to form zygotes, which becomes the ookinids, which becomes the oocysts, and finally sporozoids. These sporozoids migrate to the salivary gland of the mosquito and are ready to be deposited into the human circulation during the next blood meal. Some of the merozoids of Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale released from the liver during the primary exoerythrocytic cycle do not infect red blood cells, but rather they reinfect the liver and stay dormant for months or even years. These are referred to as hypnozoids. These hypnozoids make it difficult to eradicate Plasmodium vivax and plasmodium overlay infection unless a drug that targets these hypnozoids is used. Different plasmodium species affect different groups of red blood cells. Plasmodium falciparum infects red blood cells of all ages. Plasmodium vivax and ovale infects young red blood cells referred to as reticulocytes. Plasmodium malaria infects old red blood cells. Plasmodium vivax needs a certain molecule referred to as Duffy antigen to enter the red blood cells. However, these molecules are not present on red blood cells with hemoglobin S. Thus, hemoglobin S is protective for Plasmodium vivax infection. In people with thalassemia and glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency or GCSPD deficiency, infected red blood cells are prone to oxidative stress. Thus, they are quickly destroyed before the Plasmodium matures into schisms. Therefore, thalassemia and GCSPD deficiency confer some amount of immunity against malaria infection. Infected red blood cells are prone to destruction called hemolysis. This hemolysis leads to the release of toxins which can cause fever. Infected red blood cells are also more sticky to the blood vessels due to the presence of certain molecules on their surface. Clinical features of uncomplicated malaria include fever, chills and rigors, malaise, anorexia or loss of appetite, joint pain also called atralgia. Complicated malaria may present with coma, convulsions, hypoglycemia, 
severe anemia due to excessive destruction of red blood cells, hemoglobinuria, also called black water fever, acute pulmonary edema, acute renal failure, metabolic acidosis, shock, and sometimes the plasmodium may block the blood vessels in the brain, leading to cerebral malaria. Investigations done in the diagnosis of malaria include thick and thin blood film. The thick blood film shows the density of infection or how much are the red blood cells parasitized by the plasmodium, while the thin blood film shows the type of plasmodium species infecting the red blood cells. Other investigations done include quantitative buffy coats, polymerase chain reaction, rapid diagnostic test which is fast and reliable, and enzyme immunoassay. The treatment of malaria depends on the severity of infection. Uncomplicated malaria can be treated with chloroquine, sulfadoxine pyrimetamine, also called Fancida. This is commonly used also as prophylaxis. However, the plasmodium species have developed resistance to these drugs. Thus, the current use of artemisinin-based combination therapy, ACT. ACT involves the use of a drug from the fast-acting artemisinin class in conjunction with a companion drug which has a different mode of action. These companion drugs include lumenfatrine, mefloquine, amodiaquine, sulfadoxine pyrimetamine, hyperaquine, chloproguanine dapsone. Artemisinin derivatives include dihydroatemisinin, artesunate, and artemita. An example of ACT is combination of artemita and lumenfatrine. Another example would be the combination of artesunate and amodiaquine. Also, the complication of the malaria infection should be treated. And vaccines have been developed against malaria infection.